have a little bit of a problem. Good morning, my name is Shinny Perrell. I am an author and knitwear designer from the Pacific Northwest and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Uh, here we talk about all things crafting, writing, and today we're gonna talk about some reading and my TBR of shame. So for those of you who are newer here, um, I started this channel back in like 2013, 2014 as a booktube channel. And since then it has changed and progressed and it took a very long hiatus due to technological issues. And when I brought it back in 2021, 2022, something like that, um, I was talking more about my writing and my making and less about what I was reading. And that's because around the time COVID started, I started getting really sick, not with COVID, but with just general chronic illness problems. Um, we have now since, I think, hopefully gotten to the root of it. Um, but basically I was very, very sick. I was very, very tired. I could not function as a human being. And as a result, I got into a massive five year long reading slump. And I'm only just starting to come out of it this year. So the stack of books that I showed you in the intro, those are just the books from my nightstand. Yes, my nightstand is a cabinet style nightstand. So I have all of these books that I have gotten fully with the intention of reading and trying to get back into reading. And I just have not been able to because I haven't had the bandwidth or the energy or the whatever to be able to do it. So this pile is getting unmanageable and I'm still seeing books that like I want to read and I want to get into and I just haven't been able to. So today I want to go through what is on that list, decide if these are things that I definitely want to read and if so, they can stay on the TBR. If not, I'm gonna put them back on our main bookshelf in the living room because these are not all of my unread books. <laughs> I have more. I bought Before the Devil Breaks You when it came out in 2017 and I still haven't read it. So let's start with the tallest stack that I have here, my stack of shame, which is Lee Bardugo. When Shadow and Bone first came out on Netflix, I immediately got very obsessed with it. I really loved it. So for Christmas, Ash got me the boxed set of the Grishaverse trilogy. So I've already read Shadow and Bone. I read that one immediately. I read it in like a week and I was like, oh, awesome. I'm over my reading slump. Well, then I sat down in November to read the second book. It's July, and to be fair, um, when I start, when I really picked this up in earnest again at the end of June, I was only on chapter four. So that should give you some idea of how my reading slump is going. So I need to finish this book, and to be fair, this is all like preview extra material. So I'm, I'm almost done with the main part of the book, but I still have Ruin and Rising to read. And after I finished Shadow and Bone, I was immediately very eager for more. So not only did I start reading Siege and Storm, which I never really got into, it wasn't because I wasn't enjoying it. It was just my brain did not want to read. But then I also got onto thrift books and I found The Raven Cycle and I got Nikolai's books. So I have six Lee Bardugo books here that I really do want to read that I have not gotten to yet and they've been sitting on my shelf for what, two years at this point? So these are high priority. I definitely want to read these. Um, and I am making good progress in Siege and Storm, like I said. Um, I'm really enjoying that one. 
it, it's just, it's been really hard to get my brain to sit down and read. And I think we finally got the medication thing figured out. And that is definitely being a big help with my ability to read. So my second stack that I have here is my research books. So first I have The Highway of Tears. This is research for my audio only podcast that's up on Spotify. It's currently on hiatus still. I was planning on coming back at the end of May, but then life exploded and I have not been able to get back into my research. I just haven't had time. I am still trying to clean up the aftermath from that. And the other thing is that I had two job related things happen this week. So I don't know when I'm going back to work. So I definitely do want to finish this. The main reason I haven't finished it is because I am pacing it to where I am in the podcast timeline. Um, so the parts that I haven't read in this are relating to that later part of the story that I'm telling on the podcast. Next up, we have two books of ghost stories that I bought specifically for Spooky Stitches for our ghost story at the end of each episode that I often don't read, um, just because I have not had time to sit down and find spooky stories to read. So we have Ghosts by Gaslight. This is a um, anthology and it's edited by Jack, Dan, and Nick Cheevers, Gevers. I don't know how to say that last name. Um, and so these are steampunk and supernatural suspense short stories. And then the other one, this one I have read several stories from, and you can see where I have bookmarked a couple for the future. This is the Virago Book of Ghost Stories. It's another anthology edited by Richard Dalby. This one is, I know this particular edition is from the 80s, but it's a reprint. So I originally found this on archive.org and I want to say that the original version of this is from the 40s, but the uh, copyright page on this is only listing 1987 for some reason, um, which is not what it said on archive.org. Anyway, um, this has some really good ghost stories in it, and I need to get back to reading this and bookmarking tales that I can add to our spooky story later, or add to the podcast later on. I do apologize. We have quite a few planes going by today. Um, I think that they're less of a problem when I'm using my good mic for that. However, I don't have enough room on my desk for that right now. So please bear with me on the audio here. Um, so the second book is one that I picked up recently when we were at Fort Nisqually with the friend who was staying with us for three weeks. And this is, uh, I believe this is from like a museum, like living history type press. And it is Madame Le Marchland's Fortune Teller and Dreamer's Dictionary. And it is a reprint of a book from the 1800s about fortune telling and dream interpretation. So I do want to read this. I write a lot about uh, psychics in the 1800s and early 1900s, so I thought this would be a good resource to have. Yeah, the next two books I got from the library recently, they are due on July 22nd and it's currently, I believe, July 16th. 17th, sorry. <laughs> so um, I'm kind of running out of time on this, but I want to get Siege and Storm done first. I should be able to renew these without an issue. Um, first one is one that I have been wanting to read for a long time, and it's The Butchering Art by Kate Lister. I'm sorry, I've got my authors mixed up. Uh, Lindsay Fitzharris is the author on this one. Uh, Kate Lister is another Victorian scholar that I was following on Twitter before I left Twitter. Um, but I've heard a lot about this. It is directly related to my 
interests, which include Victorian medicine and history. And this would be a great resource again for the stuff that I write. And then the last one in that stack is Death in Florence by Paul Strathern. And this is an SCA reference book. Um, this is for my like, character and background, and it might one day translate into a novel because I do have an idea set for Renaissance era Florence, um, but we're not there yet. So this is another reference book that I want to read just for funsies. You know, my last stack, these are all novels, and this stack was slightly less shameful until June. And then as part of our tourist activities, we hit a whole bunch of used bookstores. So the first one I've got, this is The Mystery of Edwin Drood. And I got this for a couple of reasons. So the first one is, I like Charles Dickens, I like ghost stories. This is a ghost story by Charles Dickens. And it's one of the last books that he ever wrote. Actually, I think it is the last book he ever wrote. And I'm not entirely certain that it's finished. Um, but I have been wanting to read it ever since I saw the episode of Doctor Who that involved Charles Dickens back in the Nine era, um, Christopher Eccleston. The other reason I bought it is because this is clearly a antique edition. It was originally published. I don't know what the actual publication date is in here because it doesn't have a copyright page. However, inside it has a, a book plate for the Annie Wright Seminary and it's dated 1915 March um, and if you don't know a seminary was a finishing school or a girls school in the 1800s and apparently up into the early 1900s normally that phrase went out of favor um, in like the late 1890s, early 1900s, like before 1905. Um, but apparently they were just late changing their name. And then it was in the library long enough to get updated barcodes. Um, so I'm assuming this is from sometime in the 90s. And at that point, it just went by the Annie Wright School in Tacoma. So I thought this was a neat piece of history. Next up, we have Bridge of Souls by V.E. Schwab. This is the third book in a series. I've read the first two. I absolutely loved them. Got the third book when I found it on sale several years ago, um, probably two, three years ago at this point. Um, and I was just very excited to read it. This one is set in New Orleans. Um, but again, I haven't gotten to it. Okay, next up is another library book from that same library hall here. This is The Thread Collectors. Um, I know very little about this other than what it says on the back. It was written by um, Shauna J. Edwards and Allison Richmond, and it's a dual perspective story set in both the North and the South during the American Civil War. It's the tale of two women who are brought together through textile arts. So it's ticking a lot of boxes for me. It's women in the Civil War. It involves crafting and sewing and textiles. So I'm here for it. Um, I just haven't had a chance to get to it yet because I've been trying to read Siege and Storm. <laughs> All right, the next two are from when we went to Powell's. Again, we spent a lot of time in used bookstores in June. Um, so this is Beyond the Offbeat by Becky Albertalli. Um, I know this one is an older one. It's an older YouTube favorite. And this one, I haven't read anything else by Becky Albertalli, but I liked the sound of this one. And it is a standalone, even if it is part of an interconnected world. I would still like to read it, but it is less of a priority than some of my other books. Love and Lies of Roxana Ali by Sabina Khan. Um, I found this book on my very first trip to Powell's back in 2018 or 2019. I'm not sure what year it was, um, but I found it. I really liked it, but I didn't have any money at the time. 
So when I made my second trip to Pals back in June, I thought it was very fitting to pick this up. So this one is kind of like a coming out story involving a young Muslim girl. Um, I'm really excited to read it. So this one is also like low priority, but it's higher priority than Leah on the Offbeat. Next up, we have The Sneakered Book and Scone Society by Ellery Adams. Um, this is another used book that I got um, in Tacoma recently. And this one, when I was doing some market research for my cozy mystery, this one kept coming up as like the end all be all cozy mystery. So I picked this one up for reference because it was like two or three dollars. Um, and I do really want to read this one. This one is higher priority because it is both a novel and a research book for me. Next, we have The Haunted History of Invisible Women by Leona Renee, Renee Heber and Andrea Janes. Um, Leona is a friend and mentor of mine. Uh, we met at Steampunk Symposium several years ago. She came out and visited us. We had dinner a few months ago. Um, and this book came out when I was very, very broke during another period of uh, in between temp jobs. So I got this book used. I usually try and get her books new to support her, um, but you do what you gotta do. And I have found a good deal on this one on thrift reads or thrift books. Um, but this is all tales of women through history who have, um, you know, questionable pasts. Um, it talks about, according to the back of the book, uh, widows, Jezebels, innocent maidens, wronged lovers, former slaves, and the occasional axe murderess. You can probably guess who that one is. Um, so I'm very excited to read this one. I love Liana's books, love her as a person. So I'm very excited to read this one. Um, it is a little bit lower on the priority list because while it is nonfiction, it's not really a research book for me right now. Um, it's more, I'm reading it for fun. So this one I do definitely want to read, but it's a little bit lower on the totem pole, but not quite as low as the last two I showed you. And then the last one, this one was a gift that Ash found at like an antique mall or something. And it is Cherry Ames Student Nurse by Helen Wells. And this is a vintage book, I'm guessing from probably the 50s, based on the cover. Nineteen forty-three. Um, so she thought that this would be right up my alley, and if it is a World War II story, according to the back, which doesn't have a whole lot on it, um, she is a bright-eyed nurse to a quaint girls' boarding school, uh, a handsome young doctor, and the mystery of an exotic rare perfume make it this an enchanting story you won't want to miss. I know absolutely nothing about this, but it looks interesting. It is not high on the priority list, but at the same time, I've been kind of going through a World War II kick lately, so this might get bumped up a little bit higher in the priority list. So let me look through here, and I'm going to pick out uh, the books that I am most excited for and that I am prioritizing right now. Okay, I think this is my list. So obviously I want to finish Siege and Storm because I've already started it. And then I also want to do uh, Ruin, and, Ruin and Rising because I want to finish up this series and get the box set out of my room and make a little bit more space. So next we have this one just because I've already started it. It is for the podcast. I feel bad when I don't include the spooky story that I have promised. So this one is next. Well, actually probably not next next. Next next is probably going to be the butchering art um, and or 
um, the thread collectors just because these are library books I do need to get them back I'm not sure if I can renew them so those are high priority I might actually slide those in before Ronin Rising um, just because they're not mine and then the last book on my priority stack is The Secret Book and Scone Society. So the rest of these I need to find homes for because they do not all fit in my nightstand. Um, my nightstand books have kind of exploded and taken over parts of my desk. So I need to get these put away. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stack them in my nightstand so that they're prioritized except the library books. The library books I'm going to leave out on my desk so that I read them ASAP. And the next step is figuring out some kind of plan of attack for this. Um, so like I said, I haven't had time for reading or bandwidth for reading and I want to get back to it. So I'm trying to dedicate some time every day to reading. It is actually something that is on my to-do list. It is on my time blocking schedule just to try and make sure I get it done. I haven't been as good about it as I would like to be, but I'm going to try um, currently because I don't have a day job. I'm trying to read every day when I take my lunch break, which is about an hour in the middle of the day. I eat something, do a little bit of housework, and I'm trying to read while I eat. Um, I'm also trying to read a little bit before bed instead of watching YouTube. Um, that one is more difficult because I always have my headphones on, always. But I'm trying to switch it over to music instead of watching a video that would interfere with my ability to read. Um, when I do go back to the office, if I get one of the two positions that I've had contact about this week, um, in both cases, I'd be taking public transit, which means that I would have a minimum of 45 minutes each way in order to read. Um, and if I can read for at least 30 of those, I'd be taking the train. And this is actually important because when I was taking the bus um, prior to COVID, um, because I was starting to get sick, I was having a lot of issues with motion sickness and I had to stop reading on the bus. However, the train is a little bit more stable and it's a little bit easier for me to manage. And then of course, I'll also have my lunch breaks. Now I do also carry knitting with me when I work in an office. So it's gonna be kind of a toss up. Like some days I might spend more time knitting, some days I might spend more time reading. Um, when I'm at home, I can do both at the same time. That is a lot harder in a moving vehicle. So that is the current plan. And now I just need to figure out some kind of organization for this. Okay, so that's everything put away. And if you thought, but Sheena, that nightstand doesn't look all that full. There are other things that live in that nightstand. I just took them out to prioritize the books and also remember that my uh, library books go in another place so that I see them every day and so that they don't get lost in the shuffle or I forget to return them. So I'm going to get back to my regular routine. Um, hopefully read some more of this today. I have I've got 140 pages left in Siege and Storm. Uh, I've been reading about 50 pages at a time lately. So hopefully I can finish that tomorrow or the day after and then we'll be able to move on to the next thing. Are reading vlogs going to be a thing on this channel? Will reading wrap-ups be a thing? I have no idea. Um, I would love to get back into doing more booktube content, um, but when you're only reading one book every three months, that's really hard. So hopefully, I write a book in June. I'm hoping to finish a book in July. Maybe I'll get lucky and finish two books. Will be daring about it. Um, and this isn't even 
all of the books. Like I said, I still have more in the living room that I haven't read. Um, and let's not talk about my ebooks or my library TBR. Um, part of the reason I'm not addressing that is because when we moved to Washington, I tried to go like 75% ebook, um, trying to trying to just pare down and take up as little space as possible, trying to be more environmentally friendly. And that didn't work for me. Um, I don't enjoy reading ebooks on my tablet. I will read them sometimes on my laptop if I have to, um, but I just don't like doing it. And it doesn't help that the last couple of tablets I've had have just been pieces of crap. They're very slow. They don't run very well. So I'm thinking about getting something like a Kindle Paperwhite, um, something with an e-ink screen to see if maybe that helps a little bit, but that is not in the budget right now. That is, that's not a thing that's happening. So, um, yeah, we will see how this new reading regime goes. My next video is probably going to be a Spooky Stitches episode, so stay tuned for that. I post pretty much every Wednesday, um, and in the meantime, just stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope that you have something cute and fluffy to cuddle with. Ciao!